communications tab located in the bottom section of the page. Along with Dr. Zaragoza, our panel will consist of Mary Kay Bailey, Vice President of Finance, Mariana Kiwen, Director of Government Affairs, Dr. Bill Dial, Chief Human Resources Officer, and ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Zaragoza. Good afternoon and welcome CSN family. Thank you for joining us today for yet another town hall meeting. Our focus today will be primarily on the anticipated budget impact of the recently concluded special legislative session. Before I pass the program over to our very capable panel though, let me make a few observations. We are in an uncertain and dynamic environment, and that may be the understatement of the day. We are in the midst of three unprecedented crises. We have a health crisis, uh, we have our COVID-19 pandemic, and all of the work that goes with trying to return to campus and addressing safety-related issues. We have an economic and budget crisis that has seen 20% unemployment rates and a reduced tax base. And we have a social justice crisis. Each of these directly impacts CSN and contributes to a climate of uncertainty. None of us, and especially me, like uncertainty, but we have to adopt because this is the environment for the foreseeable future. Let me also remind you that there are still uncertainties created by the special legislative session. While we're gonna be providing you with a lot of information that uh, transcended the uh, session, there are some areas that will need follow-up. This is particularly true as it pertains to pending Board of Region actions related to furloughs and then operating a fund offset of $50 million. So the big picture, the bottom line of the special session is that the NG budget was cut by another $25 million. Plans are for NG to absorb $50 million of that cut, while the colleges will assume the remaining 10 million budget reduction. The overall NG budget cut for 2021 is $134.6 million. Assuming the Board of Regents approves the $50 million offset, the impact on CSN will be an additional $1.6 million. However, as you know, we have already taken a $17.5 million reduction. Thus, the total budget impact for CSN for FY 2021 will be $18.1 million. So let me make one other observation, and that is while these are devastating cuts, CSN is in a position to move forward within a shared government context and with a budget reduction plan that limits the impact on students and does not include layoffs. So with that as a backdrop, let me pass the session now to our very capable panel. Thank you, Dr. Saragosa. Thank you for the opportunity to update our faculty about this special session. Um, as you stated, these are very difficult times for our college, our state, our country, and, and quite frankly, the world. Um, and due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our state was hit with a $1.3 billion uh, budget deficit. Um, so naturally, as a consequence, on July 7th, our governor, Governor Sisolak, issued a proclamation calling uh, for a special legislative session to ask our state legislators to come together and balance uh, our state budget. Uh, and, and, and the previous day, he had issued a COVID-19 fiscal report outlining his suggestions uh, and his budget plan uh, and recommendations to the state legislature. Uh, as a result, a special session took place from July 8th through July 19th. Uh, all of you who were uh, involved know that it was 12 very, very long days and, and very unexpected days where, you know, session came, would, you know, was adjourned almost at three in the morning one of those nights. So it, very long days, uh, you know, and as you said, Dr. Saragosa, going into the session, um, and she was hoping for no surprises, given that all of our institutions had already agreed to 
uh, budget reduction that was already approved by our Board of Regents. Um, however, about six days into the session, uh, we re received word that the Assembly was considering amending uh, the budget bill, which is Assembly Bill 3, uh, to ask NSHE for an additional $50 million. Um, we immediately came together to come up with a strategy to respond. Uh, we began to reach out to legislators and to prepare our faculty and student leaders uh, for public testimony. Uh, fortunately, a few days later, a negotiation was reached to reduce the amount uh, from 50 million to 25 million. Uh, the agreement, as you said, would include 15 million uh, from NSHE's operating pool and the remaining 10 million to be split among the eight uh, institutions, with CSN's portion being 1.6 uh, million. Uh, we, attentively, we attentively followed AB3 in both chambers, and, and I, I want to take this opportunity to thank our faculty senate chair, Maria Shell Hayes, and our incoming student body president, uh, Carly McFarling uh, Kelly, McFarling Kelly uh, for their strong advocacy in opposition of additional budget cuts. Uh, it was really um, inspiring to hear our leaders uh, advocate for CSN. Um, and so certainly would like to uh, direct uh, your attention to a few um, uh, policy outcomes that came out of the session. Um, as you can see in the screen, Assembly Bill 3 made a few changes, uh, including the 25 million that we already mentioned. Uh, but additionally, a Promise Program was a, a cut by $1 million. Um, however, fortunately, uh, that will be supplemented by the Governor's CARES Act funds. Um, and I stated the sections that you can review in Assembly Bill 3. In addition to the Promise Program, prison education was also impacted. Uh, about $77,000 were, were cut from fiscal year 20, uh, 20, uh, 2021. CSN's portion, given uh, that we uh, split uh, that, that cost with uh, WNC and TMCC, our portion came out to about $29,000. Uh, fortunately, uh, for our prison education program, CSN has agreed to absorb these cuts uh, to keep our program whole. Um, next slide, please. Uh, Assembly Bill 3 also addressed uh, furlough days, uh, which uh, brought it down from the originally proposed 12 days that the, the governor had recommended down to six days for full-time state employees, with a few exceptions that I'm sure Bill can later address. Um, additionally, uh, merit pay, um, actually language about merit pay did not make Assembly Bill 3. Uh, it did not include, include the language to freeze merit pay, again, as recommended by the, the governor. It was in Assembly Bill 1, uh, but it did not make it in the final version of the bill. Therefore, merit pay does remain in effect. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and I'd also like to direct your attention to uh, St Senate Bill 2, which addressed the Governor Gwen Millennium Scholarship, um, which authorizes our border regions to temporarily waive or modify some of the eligibility requirements to, to receive the scholarship, uh, specifically the GPA requirements. Um, and this is obviously in response to uh, the Governor's state of emergency and his declaration uh, uh, of disaster. And this is fortunately, it, it, it's good for our students. It, it will uh, apply retroactively to the spring of 2020 semester to ensure that the students who obviously for economic reasons and many other reasons were unable to meet uh, the GPA requirements. Um, so that's, that's, those are the two main bills that impacted CSN uh, directly. And as Dr. Saragosa already stated, the Board of Regents will uh, hopefully approve the additional budget cuts on, on August 7th. And as I've told everyone, uh, budget cuts are, are never a good uh, thing for us. However, uh, this was, you know, a, a reasonable outcome considering the situation we found ourselves in. So thank you for the opportunity and I'm happy to answer any further questions throughout the town hall. Thank you. Thank you, Mariana. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mary Kay Bailey, Vice President for Finance. Um, many of you saw some of the same information when we presented about a month ago, but I wanted to take a moment to revisit uh, this slide for those of you that didn't see it, and then provide some updates based on the special session outcomes that uh, Mariana just outlined. So for FY20, the year that we just ended, June 30th, 2020, uh, we had a 4% budget cut to our state-supported operating budget. And the cut was taken in the categories that you see here. 
Uh, the first line, HEC SHEC, is our Higher Education Capital Construction and Special Higher Education Capital Construction Fund um, that we receive for our de deferred maintenance projects. So we return those funds um, and, and we'll transfer the projects to our capital improvement fee account. These are projects, as I've previously mentioned, that deal with life and safety issues. So we have to move forward with them. We, it's not something that we can't do, but this means that other projects on our capital improvement fee funds will have to be uh, foregone or deferred uh, to later years. In addition, as many of you know, early on in the pandemic, the governor instituted state hiring freezes. So we immediately stopped our recruiting processes and pulled positions from being posted. This action and other vacant positions during the year contributed to the savings that you see here of $1.4 million. The governor also had a directive on essential business spending and travel, uh, that along with our inability, inability to travel um, during the pandemic has created uh, savings and natural expense reductions, as you see here for $1.2 million. We also had to transfer some expenditures to non-state accounts uh, $945,000 to meet our budget cut, and we are returning some of our excess student fees to the state. Uh, these were fees that were um, in excess of our budget on our capacity appropriation that we would normally be able to spend, but this year we had to return those fees. Moving on for our FY21 re reduction, um, our pre-session amount was 16% which was $17.8 million reduction. And we'll talk about that further in a minute. Previously, we talked about a $20 million reduction potentially for FY21, but the governor's finance office asked us to remove the furloughs from our accounting as they had it in their accounting and we, we can't both count it, right? So while the furloughs are still a cut, we don't get to count them. And so well, when I say 16%, you may have heard 19% before or something, but um, you know, I'm, I'm saying 16% because we can't count the furloughs. So again, um, and then post-session, uh, we we're now at a 17.5% reduction, but I'll, I'll go through that in a little more detail. Next slide, please. So for the initial 16% reduction, a lot of this should look familiar as well in FY21. This totals the $17.5 million, and this is the breakdown that was board approved, submitted to the governor's finance office, and then later submitted to our legislators as part of NCHU's overall budget reduction plan. In the first line um, of what we submitted, this is our institutional portion of the CARES Act funding that we received from the federal government. We then submitted additional funds on the second line for our, from HEC check um, that we are going to return to the state. And we also put forward $2.1 million in vacant frozen positions. Again, these are vacant positions. There's no, there are no employees in these positions right now. So, um, this action was also codified through Dr. Zaragoza's budget reduction task force work. So on the fourth line, we're planning a redistribution of the student fee by moving a dollar of the fee from one of our um, student fee accounts back to the state fund. That will help us to cover this budget reduction. And on the fifth line, this is the student fee surcharge for our students. Um, this is a $3 per credit charge for both lower and upper division classes, and this was just approved by the board um, yesterday for our 2020-2021 academic year. So that's this year starting fall 2020. The final line um, on this budget reduction that came in a little later than the others was a 5% cut for this reduction, and she did a distribution to all the institutions from the market fluctuation account. The market fluctuation account is a sort of rainy day fund. Funds were said by Funds were set aside by the board from investment income earnings after our last recession to help the institutions should we come into a situation like we're in right now. Um, and we're very thankful for that market fluctuation account. And again, this total of $17.5 million uh, does not include our percentage of the furloughs for classified and professional staff. Next slide, please. So, during the special, sh special session, as Mariana explained earlier, the legislators determined that and she needed an additional $25 million reduction. $15 million of that was committed by ENCHI from our investment income operating reserve, and the other $10 million was to be split by the institutions. Our share of that reduction is $1.6 million, $1,588,000. Um, and again, 
Through our work with the Budget Reduction Task Force, we were able to identify $1.2 million in vacant positions to freeze, so that, that will cover a majority of the additional cut. The remain, remaining 400000 or so is still a work in progress through uh, the Budget Reduction Task Force work. So in conclusion, our total cut right now for FY21 is $19 million, or 17.5%, not including furloughs. This cut is severe and it's concerning. Many of the actions that we've taken, like the CARES Act funding, the market fluctuation account, operating pool, those are one-time fixes and can't be sustained um, with, with ad additional year's cuts. And, and this is why we have the Budget Reduction Task Force work and why it's so important right now to help us to be prepared for anything else that might come our way. So that concludes my presentation. Cheryl, you're up. Thank you, Mary Kay. Before we hear from Bill, I want to let everyone know that you may now start entering questions into the Q&A module. Please be sure to use the Q&A module so that it can be ensured that everyone's questions are seen. We will take as many questions as we can until about five minutes from the top of the hour, and then we will wrap up the town hall. But first, let's continue with the presentation by hearing from Dr. Bill Dial. Thanks, Cheryl, and I appreciate uh, everyone being on the town hall. I just want to succinctly cover just a few uh, human resources, budget-related items. Uh, much of this is building on what Mariana and Mary Kay have spoken about. Uh, as it relates to furloughs, um, special session did reduce those from 12 to 6 days, and those will begin uh, in January uh, of 2021. That is for classified uh, professional uh, faculty uh, as all groups will be affected. Um, as Mariana had stated, merit pay uh, was restored. It was not put uh, in the bill itself. And so um, that was good news for our classified staff. And, um, and I want to emphasize again what Mary Kate stated, that we, we do have the position freezes from the Budget Protection Task Force, but that those are were, were vacant positions. There were, there were no positions that had that were encumbered that had people in those. And so uh, I want to make that very clear. Uh, one last thing I also wanted to uh, talk about uh, that, that I failed to put in this slide is that for classified staff, uh, there was an increase of 10 vacation days that can be carried forward. Uh, so that was increased from 30 to 40 days. And so um, I apologize for not putting that in this slide, but uh, that was also uh, passed in the special session. But um, I think this is a great time to start into the Q&A, uh, and I'm certain all of us will be glad to answer any questions uh, that, that the, uh, our, our employees may have. Great. Right, thank you, Bill. So our first question is, is merit pay for classified employees? That is correct, yes, classified employees. Is it still a possibility that there may be layoffs? Again, one of our objectives from day one has been uh, to uh, make sure that the last lever that we put with layoffs, and uh, as I report, reported earlier, I do not believe that we are going to be uh, looking at a layoff situation, uh, and it's not in our budget uh, reduction plan. So the short answer is no. Will merit pay be back on the table in the future for freezes, or does it seem safe for now? Mary Kay, maybe you and I can uh, <laughs> co-answer this question. I, uh, I want to go back to what Dr. Zaragoza said at the very top of the hour, that these are uh, uncertain and, and, and dynamic environments. And what I will say right now is that merit pay is restored. It is for 2021. Uh, and, and that's where we stand today. Um, and I don't want to project into the future right now, just due to, again, the dynamic environment in which we uh, are, are functioning right now. I might I, have missed, go ahead. I might have missed this, but I want to know if there are any indications of additional requests for cuts from the state for CSN. There are none uh, as far as we know, uh, but, but I want to emphasize that uh, we're in this very uncertain environment, but, but special session actually uh, uh, codified what was expected of the state agency. So for the next fiscal year, this is pretty finite, uh, but there's always abilities to retract and claw back options, et cetera. So it's part of that uncertain environment, but uh, 
as far as we know, uh, this is kind of the scenario that we're looking at. And I'm going to defer to Mary Kay uh, to see if there's anything else that she uh, might have that I don't. And and I don't know, Dr. Zaragoza, right now, as far as we know, this, these are the cuts that we have. The the 19.1 million for FY21 is, is what we have. Uh, we do have a special or a regular session starting, um, you know, in, in February. But as far as I know, where we're at right now is where we're at. I will remind everybody to post questions in the Q&A module. Our next one is Dr. Z said CSN's portion of the budget cut is 18.1 million. Mary Kay gave the total number to be 19.069 million. Can you explain the difference? There isn't. It's 19.1. It's by my, my at math. So it's 19.1 million, which is Mary Kay's number. We were told that the health insurance will not be impacted, but according to the last payroll, there were significant changes. Why was there an, in an increase? Okay, so I'll address that a little bit. So there were not additional changes to what uh, PEB, PEB had uh, done initially for the, for the renewal rate. So when they met, there were not additional increases to premiums. And so um, what I can do in HR is we can, uh, formulate a message to send out again to be very clear what any of those changes were in premiums. Can you clarify which contracts for professional staff will be affected for furloughs? It would be the A and the B contracts will be affected. Um, if, if you'll recall, B plus or those 22 extra days, that is not part of base pay. So those would not be affected by the furlough if there is a B plus contract. Will professionals continue to receive COLA and has COLA been frozen? I can answer that. There, there was no appropriation for COLA in FY21. And so we, we did receive COLA for FY20, uh, but, but no COLA for this current year was appropriated in the last session. Has it been verified that the 7 million in CARES funding can be used toward budget reductions? If it has not, when do we anticipate getting that clarification? So, it, so the $7 million, um, it's my understanding that it cannot be used directly for budget cuts, but we can use the CARES Act money for expenditures that have a nexus to COVID. So we are working right now on a strategy and a plan to um, effectively use the CARES Act funding. Will any campuses or community sites be closing as part of the reductions? So, so Mark, I'll, I'll respond uh, to that. So in terms of campuses, obviously, that, that, that there's no discussion at this point to, to close any of the campuses. Uh, but in terms of the budget reduction discussions, uh, so some of the uh, uh, regional centers are being evaluated, uh, and we're looking at the possibility uh, that if we have to, we might have to make some adjustments in terms of either the hours or maybe even realigning staff. But if we were to do that, there would still be no layoffs uh, and that's work in progress. So there definitely has not been a decision not to close any centers, uh, but it is one of those uh, uh, budget items that we're looking at as part of budget reduction. If we are now at six furlough days, how does that translate into a percentage of pay reduction? Yeah, so if you recall, um, the original plan was 4.6% of, of furloughs, which was 12 days. Well, that's now been cut in half. So roughly, and, and, and Mary Kay, I may defer to you, that will be like 2.3% um, uh, is what that will roughly equate to. Understanding it will be over six months. So in those six months between January through June, it will be a 4.6 reduction in your in each in each employee's paycheck but keeping in mind it's only for half of the year so it's really a 2.3 percent over the 12 months yeah and i and i would agree with that it's it's because it's starting january 1st it will still be a 4.6 percent reduction for that six month time period um annualized you could look at it as a 2.3 percent cut but 
for that six months, it will be a 4.6% reduction. Why are furlough days not counted in the cuts? How much in dollars will be saved through furloughs? So when we looked at this originally, the furlough days, um, if I can recall, for professional, for CSN, for 12 days, was around $2.8 million, I think. So if you look at that, half of that would be $1.4 million. Uh, for CSN, I, I don't have the figure uh, for classified uh, staff furlough savings, but, but the reason why it's not counted is because the governor finance office just pulled that out off the top um, for all state employees, and so they're, they're counting it as I mentioned earlier, in their accounting of the budget reduction, um, you know, I mean, we could count it, but it, it doesn't really go anywhere. So that's why we're not counting it. Mary Kay, and I would just add that, that while it's not counted, it's recognized, it's got discredited, you can't double count, uh, but, but it, it, it's actually recognized as part of our a package of water breach of the pool. Will pay increases awarded with tenure be affected by the cuts? Not at this time, no, that, that is uh, not part of the, the reduction. Will grant and aid be available for fall 2020? Yes, yes. Okay. Short answer, yes. <laughs> when will salary appeals be revisited? Okay, so the Salary Study Appeals Committee is meeting right now, and I just uh, spoke with HR Director of Operations, Daniel Gutierrez, and the committee has been working very diligently uh, over the summer, and they hope to have that entire project wrapped up by the end of August. So if you have individual questions on that, please contact uh, Daniel, or you can reach out to me, and, and, and we will get that individual information to you. Well, and if I could just add to that, and that's that the budget appeal process has uh, no one nexus to the budget uh, discussion. Some CSN family members are having issues getting acceptance for renters and housing help. Is there anything CSN can do to help? Yeah, so, so on our COVID website, we posted some information, I believe Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, and I'm gonna ask you to go out and visit that site because there were some uh, programs that have been uh, started uh, for that. And so please visit that website. If you need uh, assistance on that individually, contact our HR office through HR customer service and, and we will guide you to, to those resources uh, for certain. Since full-time faculty and classified positions are secure positions, why are the administrative professionals different? It seems to be continuous revolving door with great employees disappearing and new hires through the years. Um, I, I'm not sure I'm understanding the, the question. Um, I, I will know it again. I think maybe if it's talking to layoffs there, there have been no layoffs uh, of, of administrative faculty. Um, so perhaps if you could reword the question maybe a little clearer and I'll, I'll, I'll try and answer that a little bit uh, more succinctly if I can. Are faculty sabbaticals impacted by the budget reduction? At, at this time, no, they are not to my, to my knowledge. Is a buyout for classified still being considered for the future as done in 2008, since layoffs are not being considered at this time? So actually, uh, Vicki Dominguez and I are, are co-chairing a subcommittee exploring that very program, and we are meeting, and we're meeting weekly. Uh, we have a meeting on Monday, and we hope to have some data to present to Dr. Zaragoza and the Budget Reduction Task Force with some modeling. And so that is definitely, I think, one of the top 15 uh, ideas that came out of that. And so we're exploring that data and, and best practices right now. And, and uh, uh, Vicki has just been a great uh, help on that, as has Lisa and Leanne uh, from, from our budget office. And so uh, we are working on that and, and hope to have some data to the Budget Reduction Task Force uh, by the end of the month. Will there be cuts to faculty positions? No, let me kind of clarify that because I think it's important kind of to understand 
one of the drivers, one of the pillars, if you will, of transparency uh, uh, managing the budget reduction process was that we minimize impact on students. And, and the first pillar that we're trying to, uh, to keep hold is our instructional component. So we have X amount, I, I believe it's like 5,000 sections that we fund annually, uh, and that's not impacted. The, the other element to it, and Bill mentioned that, is that uh, we actually did not cut back positions. We just, in some cases, froze positions that had not been posted or were not in the recruiting mode. So it should not impact uh, kind of the department's uh, uh, current uh, allocation of uh, FTEs for hire. That's correct, Dr. Z, and we are actively recruiting, I believe, 39 uh, faculty right now, positions, academic faculty. Will campus reopen the first week of August? I wish Patty were here to answer that, but I can tell you that yesterday we submitted our plans, uh, uh, as did all the and she, uh, institutions uh, on our campus opening, and I can tell you that the current plan is for all of us. Uh, basically to be operational uh, the first day of the fall semester. But the caveat to that was that none of us were blind uh, uh, to the environment that we're in. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we've been from day one indicating that if we needed to uh, make adjustments, we would based on, uh, on the information from our, our scientists and, and the directives from uh, a state uh, government and, and uh, NCHI as well. Uh, and so we are positioned at the pivot if we have to. Uh, but as of today, we're still proceeding uh, under the assumption that we will be operational uh, at the beginning of the fall semester. How can employees submit ideas or questions to the budget reduction task force? So it's very important to know how the, the budget reduction task force was structured. Uh, it was structured basically uh, uh, by working through the stakeholder groups. Uh, so each one of the stakeholder groups was asked uh, uh, to provide uh, input in terms of the uh, you know, ideas that they might have, and we call them action items. And 150 action items were generated by the various stakeholder groups, uh, and that included AFA, the Classified Council, Faculty Senate, uh, and NFA as well. We, we opened it up to the whole community. So we started with a, a laundry list of 150 uh, items, uh, the task force, uh, which is composed of representatives of the stakeholders, again, in the spirit of, of shared governance, then kind of uh, uh, vetted them, we did a lot of consolidations. And so we ended up with a list of 15, uh, and those are the 15 uh, uh, action items that are currently being uh, reviewed uh, uh, by the task force and are that are already generating the savings that we need to be able to stay true to our objective of no layoffs. Having said that, we're always looking for ideas uh, and I would work through your stakeholder groups. I believe that that's the most effective way to make sure that your voice is heard. So again, you've got a you know, very, very uh, uh, effective uh, stakeholder groups and organizations that, NG, that you can use. And if your last resort, send it directly to us. How do furlough days affect adjunct faculty since we are paid per credit? So, so I am researching that question right now. And, you know, as soon as I have a definitive answer, I will get back uh, and I will communicate that from human resources. How will already approved and paid for fall 2020 grant in aid be affected by the $3 student surcharge? Me, you know what? I, I, I guess I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look into that as well because I don't recall how that's impacted by the surcharge. I, I believe the surcharge is in addition to, um, it's in addition. I know it's in addition to the registration fees, and I don't believe grant aid covers the surcharge. But I, I can research that and get back to you. I thought that the cola raises were part of the 2019-2020 budget. Did this change? COLA was part of the 2019-2020 budget, and COLA was um, paid for FY19, FY20 um, fiscal year. Uh, what I indicated earlier was there was not additional COLA 
for this, this year that we just started for FY21. So you wouldn't get a, another COLA increase for FY21. Will CSN High School remain? As I mentioned earlier, uh, in the current budget reduction process, there, there are no plans basically that impact the instruction component and that includes our CSN high schools. Today, FY21 budget reduction PowerPoint does not include the furloughs. So why do we still have to do six days of furloughs? Well, those were mandated by the by the special session, and so when that was passed, then as NC, that's part of the uh, what we have to then as a system uh, honor at that point in time. Bill, yeah, and I would actually add section one thirty one point two of Assembly Bill uh, three is it has it contains the language about uh, full time state employees taking forty eight hours of unpaid furlough. There's a paragraph there that also lays out. Um, uh, some of the exemptions. So I would certainly direct people to, to that language as well. I may have missed this, but how will this impact annual vacation leave for employees? So there will be no uh, changes in annual leave, except for, as I had stated, there can be a carryover now increase from 30 days for classified staff to 40 days that can be carried over into the next calendar year. But other than that, annual leave accruals uh, along with sick leave accruals uh, will not change. For Classified employees received a flexible schedule form that if we did not work 20 or more hours, we will not be eligible for health or retirement benefits. Does this mean that we must be working on campus? So any benefits eligible position is a is an LOB, a uh, letter of benefits, or a full time position. Uh, an individual does not have to work on campus to be eligible for health benefits, um, but they do need to be in a benefits eligible position. Has a decision been made to allow half day in the first half of the month and half day in the second half of the month? Also. Has the furlough option and workday been worked out? So, so those uh, type of uh, logistics have not been totally worked out now. Um, and and in what the chancellor said yesterday in, in, in special session, uh, or you know, the board meeting was that we have a little time to work out some of those logistics as keep in mind, none of the furloughs are going to take effect through this fall, through the rest of the calendar uh, 2020 years. So as soon as we get those logistics worked out and it will be well in advance of, of January 2021, we will communicate those uh, proactively to all employees. Did our August pay reflect furloughs? If yes, is this reimbursed? So there were no uh, reductions of furlough pay in, in, in any August payroll uh, checks. And so there should be no, no deductions for furlough pay. Budgets for departments have been entered into workday. Are these budgets remaining the same? So, so as you can imagine, um, we need to get those. I, I would guess that those budgets looked really similar to what you saw for FY20, and and that's that's a way for the budget office to be able to get you some money that you can start using at the beginning of the fiscal year. There. They're working to close out FY20 currently, and um, and we'll get back to refining those budgets, um, and and hopefully have that done mid to late August. Those budgets also do not reflect some of the reductions um, that we may have to take in operating and travel and those sorts of areas that we're still working through with the budget reduction task force. So so there will be changes to those starting budget numbers for FY21 in the future. Is a CSN center is closed, what is going to happen with those employees? In a worst case scenario, they would be reassigned. Uh, and again, we would be working with HR and, and uh, ensure that there's a transition and they would be at a comparable function. But again, I wanna emphasize no such decisions have been made 
although we are looking basically at uh, uh, all of our offsites to ensure that uh, uh, we, we can continue to sustain them. I think the issue right now for us is, you know, whether the budget can sustain all of the operations that we have without adversely impacting students and student success. Will grant and aid for spring 2021 be effective? Again, at this time, no, uh, but but again, there's a budget reduction task force. Uh, again, it's a dynamic environment. And, and so what I will say today is that this time, this time there is no plans to affect grant and aid for the spring 2021 uh, semester. Is the plan that uses our furlough money transparent and how will we view it? So I'll try to answer that. Um, and Dr. Z, please, please feel free to help me out on this one. So, so the furlough reduction is is a cut to our budget. Um, so the you know the governor's finance office is just not going to send us that money. So we won't have a plan on on how we're using it because we won't receive the money to use. Mary Kay, that's an excellent explanation. Uh, so in other words, uh, you know, the, the, the revenue will not be available. That revenue stays at the state capital. So that would be a good question to ask our, our legislators and the governors in terms of accountability. Uh, but they're using it to balance the budget. And so uh, the budget bill, I, I, I think, provides uh, a framework of why the reduction is used. And, you know, again, not, not, not to defend the, the position uh, uh, of the legislature or the governor, uh, but, but, you know, one of the themes throughout the session was that, you know, the, 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 there's uh, pain being felt throughout the system. And, uh, you know, the furlough component, I think, is one that all of us feel because obviously uh, that's at the personal level. Uh, but it, it is for the benefit of the whole and it does address the bigger budget issues. Dr. Saragosa, and if I may, uh, sections 135, 34.5 and 135 of the bill that discusses furlough does say that the furlough leave requirement um, uh, may be removed if the state of Nevada receives additional federal funds. Of course, at this point, we are not counting on them. However, there is some hope if in the event that the state does receive some federal funds, um, that the state, this is one of the priorities for, for the state to supplement this money and return the furlough days to us. So just wanted to point that out about the bill. Thank you. Advisors working for advising and coaching are underrepresented represented and underpaid. Will there be a request for COLA in the near future? Mary Kay, maybe you and I can answer this. Um, I, I think COLAs are going to be dependent on uh, budget scenarios uh, going forward and uh, uh, what, what the state legislature passes. Um, and so uh, what is important to us is that uh, our, our compensation practices are fair and equitable and competitive. Uh, and, and that's why we go through salary studies uh, every few years. And, and, and so um, I think I can answer it from the HR perspective in that way. Yeah, and I would I would say just add to that 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 sounded like two different questions to me. One one about the equity and the salary, and two the cola would be is a cost of living increase. Um, you know, and whether or not uh, we're able to receive cola in the future is really dependent on what the budget scenario looks like in the future. Um, and and we'll see that in our um, next session that starts in February. Has there been restructuring that has led to elimination of positions? If so, are there more to come? So the budget reduction process, and I think Mary Kay and I have, have really tried to kind of capture the, uh, the genesis for the, uh, the discussion, uh, has focused on freezing positions that have not been hired. Uh, having said that, uh, if there are positions that, uh, you know, are not necessarily needed, uh, uh, by the departments themselves. Uh, there have been some where the departments have made adjustments and, and some positions that, that might, have, might have had a position number uh, have been in fact uh, uh, suspended from, from, from uh, uh, for the hire. So that's always an objective and in, in, in areas where there are changes or, or reorging, uh, we could basically uh, uh, be able to benefit from uh, the saving FTEs that will not be needed through efficiencies. So we're looking at that. We're looking at, 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 at uh, the whole organization and trying to uh, 
attain as much as we can in terms of uh, uh, cost savings and identifying positions that may not be needed, especially those positions that don't impact the direct function of student success or instruction. Since the furloughs are part of the state savings calculation for state funded positions, are the furloughs for non-state positions part of CSN's savings calculation? Yeah, they, they actually would be part of our savings calculation, but understand we don't have many full-time positions on our non-state account. So um, the, the savings would be fairly minimal in the scheme of what the rest of our reduction. Has there been communication about the addition of a new VP position? Is this accurate? And where is the funding coming from for a position of that level during times like these? Again, we, we've been allocated a, uh, a certain number of positions for VPs. Uh, uh, and actually, we, we have a VP position, VP of administration uh, that has never been filled. So uh, if we were, if we were to in fact proceed with another VP level position, we would use existing position numbers, existing budgeted amounts. So there wouldn't be a supplemental request of any kind. Uh, it would have to occur within the existing resources for positions at that level. So no layoffs for faculty. Are we talking about full-time faculty, adjunct faculty, or both? So we, we talked a little bit about the uh, the way that we approach the budgeting function. And so at this point, we're looking at, we are funding basically the, the schedule at about 5,000 um, uh, sections uh, that are offered annually. And then we're also dealing with the line items that would with, with departments that have already been approved. And in both of those cases, our budget does not accept any reductions to, to either one of those categories. I'm a little confused about the CARES funding. It was listed as a budget reduction item, but when the question was asked earlier, the answer was that it couldn't be used directly to cover the budget cuts. And I apologize for that. I know it is confusing. Originally, when we um, submitted our plans to, to the board, to the governor's finance office, um, it, we did think that the CARES Act money could be applied directly to the budget cuts as a revenue uh, reduction uh, coverage. But we have since learned um, from there that it can't be used exactly that way. So we can't just use it for, for um, a reduction. We do have to use it uh, to cover COVID-related expenditures. And so that's, that's where we're at right now is determining um, how we can use that in the best way possible to not have further reductions on our state um, budget. So we're, we're working through that. Are there well, laptops, monitors, computer equipment still available for staff to check out and use while working remotely? Yes, there are. And, and, and I would encourage uh, employees to work with their supervisors to work with uh, OTS, with, with uh, McGoonth and his team. Uh, and, and they can work through those technology issues uh, for, for employees. Thank you. And it looks like we're at the top of our hour. So let me turn it back over to Dr. Zaragoza to wrap us up. And again, uh, to the CSN family, thank you. Uh, thank you to the panel. Thank you for your questions. Uh, and again, just reminding you that we are in this very dynamic environment. That's why these week to week uh, uh, town halls are so important. Uh, and so we look forward uh, to talking to you again next week. And as we get more information, that'll be available and we'll pass it on to you. Uh, stay safe, God bless, and have a wonderful weekend.